Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita. It's been a hot minute. Um, I am in Columbus, Ohio, and I am house sitting and babysitting for my brother while he's out of town. And it's a lot of work. My, <laughs> I tip my hat to you, all you mothers out there. <laughs> I do know how to watch children and I, I frankly, to flatter myself, I think I'm doing a fantastic job. But the time that you have for yourself, very, very small. Um, the children are enjoying my candles, which I appreciate. Um, they enjoy blowing them out more than just enjoying them, I think, um, smelling them, but we're doing okay. We're doing okay. And I have an entire box of candles that I need to review. And I thought to myself, oh sure, I'll take them all to Columbus and review them all there. And I'm really struggling to find the time. It is dusk and the children are watching a movie and this is a moment. So we're here, we're here. And I've got a double candle review for you from Bath & Body Works. So I've got an old candle that I got off of Facebook Marketplace that is Lavender Sea, it looks like this. And I suspect this one only came out once. Is this possible? Because when I went on the internet, this is literally the only packaging that I could find of it, number one, from like four years ago, something like that. Um, this one is an international label. It was from Canada. So it's got all the languages, but like no actual information that you would want. Um, it does look like it is, is it possible that it's a 2000 and I think it's a 2018. 2018 would make it like six years old, something like that. Yeah, I think that that's right. Um, so yeah, it's an old one and I've only ever seen this packaging. And when I looked for reviews, I really struggled finding them. However, there's been a recent candle that is I think sea salt and lavender. I don't know if they're the same fragrance. Um, and the sea salt and lavender was primarily body care that has come out since then. They have different notes, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. So we'll talk about it, but I did burn it. <laughs> and then this one has been out for at least a year and this is Palo Santo and vanilla and repackaged this summer in this lovely Mediterranean vibe. And I burned it. I am, as you know, a huge Palo Santo person, mainly Palo Santo regular and 100% Palo Santo and sage. Um, this one I didn't buy because I just thought it was more of a vanilla candle than a Palo Santo candle. Um, and I'm not a vanilla girl, but I just could not say no to this packaging. I could not. So came home with me. And also if I'm going to be the unofficial CEO of Palo Santo division for Bath & Body Works, in my mind, obviously, um, then I feel as though I should at least burn this candle once. So I definitely did that. So let's talk about these two. Let's, actually, let's just start out with Palo Santo. So Palo Santo and Vanilla, the notes on this one are Palo Santo, Woody Musk, and Tonka Bean. So, um, the original Palo Santo candle is essentially the Palo Santo wood note, which is fantastic, and um, musk. It's got a heavy musk component. So in that sense, the profile is very similar to like mahogany teak wood, for instance. But I personally think that mahogany teak wood is kind of, as I'd like to call it, a first generation men's cologne. It's just very intense, not very nuanced, heavy, kind of in a cliched men's cologne. I actually think that it is a dupe of a men's cologne that actually the name escapes me now. I think it's by Drakkar. I'm not sure, I could be wrong about that. Um, but again, it's like a 90s thing, you know? We are kind of past the mahogany teakwood era and they have tried it in every single blend and mashup imaginable and still going strong. There's obviously a cult following for mahogany teakwood even now, but kind of like Midsummer Dream or Midsummer Night, <laughs> Midsummer Night from Yankee Candle, which is a very similar fragrance. 
the people who love mahogany teak wood tend to be people who have been burning it or smelling it or wearing it for a very long time. I do think Palo Santo, um, the original Palo Santo candle, which is much more recent, is kind of, I think that it is kind of the new era, the new mahogany teak wood. It's a little bit lighter, it's a little more nuanced, it's more versatile, it's more palatable, it's a whole host of different things, but it's still kind of musky, woody, masculine, yeah? So I am breathlessly waiting for all of the different mashups and blends. This was the first one that came down the pike, which was Palo Santo and Vanilla, I think. Did Palo Santo and Sage come out before? No, I think that this one was first. I think Palo Santo Vanilla and then Palo Santo and Sage, although they came out relatively within the same amount of time, um, which is to say very recent. So the two mashups that we have right now for Palo Santo are this one, Vanilla and Sage. I love the Sage one. I've been very, very transparent about that. I think the Sage one actually sets off the Palo Santo note in a more brilliant and transparent and just original kind of way, in a way that like the original Palo Santo, it, it, it's kind of like 50% musk, 50% Palo Santo, and it's lovely, like don't get me wrong, um, but it is, I don't know, it's just not quite as stripped down, or I don't know, I can't explain it. I am particularly fond of the Palo Santo Sage, however, Palo Santo Musk is a very nice one. It's the original Palo Santo. And essentially they just took that Palo Santo original with the musk and they put it over here in this candle and they added some vanilla to basically tone the entire fragrance down. It's a very like standard way to kind of mitigate or soften one of those really kind of more heavy masculine cologne kind of fragrances. Very smart. Cut it with some cream, cut it with some vanilla, right? Um, so that's basically what they did here. I do think with Palo Santo and Sage, they removed a lot of the musk and just let the Palo Santo note come through with the Sage and just kind of like a whisper of musk on the bottom. And I think that's why I like it a little bit better. All right, close parentheses. Palo Santo Vanilla is essentially, <laughs> it's almost like the him, the him and her kind of versions. Palo Santo is a little bit, it's a little bit more intense because it does not cut with the vanilla. This is essentially the same fragrance, but cut with a lot of vanilla. And in fact, so much that I would frankly say that this is kind of first a vanilla candle and then has Palo Santo in it that Palo Santo musk situation. Um, here is a caveat. When I originally bought this candle this year, like a month ago, something like that, when I smelled it, I was like, whoa. I actually think there's way more Palo Santo in this candle than I remember from last year. Because if it had smelled like this, I would have been more interested in it. <laughs> this just sounds, this just smells to me like original Palo Santo very little vanilla. As it turned out, it was cracked in the glass and I did not realize that. So I went to burn it a few weeks ago and realized that it was cracked. So I took it into the store and I exchanged it just for another one. And it was significantly more vanilla forward. Like I smelled it, this, this second one, and I'm like, okay, this is what I remember from last year, which makes me actually wonder if an original pour of the Palo Santo and vanilla candles from earlier this summer was a mistake and was in fact Palo Santo original rather than Palo Santo and vanilla. And the other thing that just occurs to me as I'm doing this is like Ken from Candle Channel bought this and burned it a few weeks ago. And he said that it was basically the same thing as Palo Santo original. And I'm wondering if there was an original pour of this that was just mislabeled, that was in fact Palo Santo original rather than the vanilla. If you get the, <laughs> the, the, the true Palo Santo vanilla should have a significant amount of vanilla in it, significant. Um, like I said, for me, it was, I never was tempted to buy it because it was more of a vanilla candle than Palo Santo. 
now that I've burned it, it, it's a good vanilla candle. It's a great vanilla candle if you think of it as a vanilla plus, you know? Would I prefer to burn this over a vanilla candle? 1000%. And I do think that if you're a vanilla person, this will be a super exotic and intriguing candle and one that you should really 100% love. So there is an entire genre, there's an entire demographic right now of women who are in love with <laughs> seven virtues. What is it? Vanilla, vanilla woods. I think it's vanilla woods, which was a perfume that came out a couple years ago. I think, I think it's been two years and was like a revelation. And it's essentially a musky woody vanilla. We've had musky and woody vanillas in home fragrance before this point. Even think of like marshmallow fireside, for instance, but we haven't had them as women's perfumes up to very recently, okay? You could burn one, but you, if you were a woman, if you were a traditional, standard, almost stereotypical kind of woman, you didn't necessarily smell like Marshmallow Fireside. We have now entered the era where everybody wants to smell like Marshmallow Fireside. And so a lot of fragrances are now mimicking this kind of like really dark, musky kind of vanilla with a heavy wood component to them. All right. So for that demographic, this can't, and if you're in this demographic, this is your candle, 100%. It's a great musky, woody vanilla candle, no question. For those of us though, and I count myself in this, who do lean already masculine and woody, this might not be enough wood. It might not be enough musk for you. You might be happier with original Palo Santo. You might be more happy with Palo Santo and Sage if you don't mind some herbal as well. Um, the candle burned fine. Um, it kind of was in the, I mean, in the open concept, I probably got about a six out of it, which was not bad for an open concept performer and definitely impressive given that it's a vanilla candle because vanilla candles tend to not project or amplify particularly well. Six is fine. Six is fine for a vanilla candle. I do think that I kind of went nose blind to it a little bit. Um, it just, I don't know, but that could be just partly the nature of vanilla candles. I do have to say though that the aspect of it that I continue to smell was the wood and musk dimension. So if I left the house, for instance, and came back in, I smelled the wood and the musk. That was the thing that I picked up. So it is a primarily vanilla candle, but because the wood and the musk are a little bit, they, they just stand up better in terms of strength and throw, you're gonna get more wood and musk in the entire experience of the candle, just because the vanilla and, and the way that vanillas are, it kind of like lifts off, burns off, right? If you can get a vanilla with a caramel note in it, for instance, that will help it project. But here, you've got the vanilla and then you have the wood and the musk. And the wood and the musk is what you're gonna smell. That's gonna linger, that's gonna be there. But it's just not firing with as much strength and intensity as like original Palo Santo, okay? I didn't have to take it back into the back bedroom, but it would be a lovely back bedroom candle. No question. You could probably get a good seven out of it, probably in the back bedroom, which is very decent. So it's a good candle. It really is. For me, it's a little too vanilla, if that makes any sense. So for me, I would be less tempted to buy this one than just a Palo Santo original, to be honest. I would just rather, since when it's burned, that's really the aspect of it that you appreciate the most is the wood, that Palo Santo, that lovely note and the musk. For me, I just rather have that in greater measure than I can, like kind of the diluted vanilla version of it. But caveat being, I'm not a vanilla person. So maybe I'm not like the best person to appreciate this kind of candle or review it. Yeah? Anyway, I think it's good. And you can't do better than this packaging. I think it's so pretty, so beautiful. Because I don't know that I would think of Palo... This is a... I, I would say this is kind of more of a cool weather candle. Although you could... You could... 
you could try it at any time, you know? Especially if you do it like in a bedroom. It's kind of something like sultry about it that seems right for the bedroom for any season. So there's that. Um, but they definitely did a lovely job of selling it to us here in the summer with this Mediterranean packaging that has absolutely nothing to do with Palo Santo or vanilla as they are olives, but God bless, right? Yeah, it's good. Um, right now it does not seem to be on sale or included in the semi-annual, so there's that. But I suspect if you wait a week, you wait two weeks, definitely four, they're gonna start putting this stuff on clearance. Once the fall stuff comes out, they're gonna want the, you know, the floor cleared out of this kind of stuff. And this would be a fantastic transitional fragrance going into the fall. So if you're the kind of person that thinks you might like this or you have not tried the Palo Santo candle, or especially for those of you who are a little nervous about the Palo Santo, that's not your vibe. You don't do those kinds of masculine ones. As with coffee and whiskey from Bath & Body Works, this is very much a gateway kind of candle, a gateway fragrance to something that's a little bit more masculine, but almost certainly something that you would like, even if you like more sweet and vanilla kind of cozy fragrances. So I really highly recommend this one. Um, and I hope, as I've said in many videos, I'm waiting for the next Palo Santo blend. I would love it to be Pumpkin Palo Santo going into the fall. Still have not heard about that one coming out. Why is it not coming out? I'm floored. Pumpkin Palo Santo. And then of course, Palo Santo Sands, which I envision with coconut, but obviously we'll see that for next year, hopefully. Okay, so Lavender Sea. By the way, if I haven't made it clear, those are all in my head. Those are all just in my, my imagination castle, but they're not actual fragrances yet, yet. Um, and then here is Lavender Sea right here. in this kind of like, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't, I can't figure out whether I think that this is ugly or beautiful. It's like ugly or beautiful. It's not in between. It's kind of cool, but also kind of weird. And yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Just a wrap around. So this is the French Canadian one right here. But from my internet research, the notes on Lavender Sea were soft lavender waves, vanilla sea foam, and coconut water. So vanilla, lavender, coconut, but then you've got this sea foam note, which is aquatic and or possibly briny. I liked this candle. So a few months ago, I reviewed what it was in. It's in this package or it's in this collection. It was like um, sea salt and lavender, sea salt and lavender. Yeah, I think that was it. And wait, sea salt and lavender. Was it sea salt and lavender? Sea salt and lavender was the body care that I was referencing at the beginning of the, oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind. It's from the children. I'm losing my mind. Sea salt and lavender was the body care that came out a few years ago. Is that the candle that I reviewed two months ago? Or not two months ago, two weeks ago? Sea salt and lavender? <laughs> I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna find out. Okay back again had to take a little pause because one of the children was calling for me so i took that moment to look back at the review that i did a couple weeks ago and it was oceanside lavender my gosh it's just it's hard to keep track of all of these different iterations and then you don't know i mean i'm the same way is this a repackage like sometimes it's very hard to tell obviously the same kind of genre here. It's supposed to be a beachy lavender. So the Oceanside Lavender, the notes on that were wild lavender, sweet sandalwood, and calming waves. So lavender, sandalwood, aquatic, briny. Those were those three. And if I recall, that candle was very strongly lavender and briny salt. And I thought that the lavender was a very strong aromatherapy kind of lavender. So I thought if that's not your vibe, and I didn't love it, I have to be honest, I didn't love the candle and I didn't think it performed like extraordinarily well. I mean, it wasn't terrible either, it was decent, 
but it was a little on the weak side. And I just don't know that I'm that much of a lavender person or an aromatherapy lavender person to like really appreciate that candle. I actually kind of like more of a conceptual lavender most of the time. So that was Oceanside Lavender. Sea Salt and Lavender is that other fragrance that came out after this Lavender Sea, but um, in body care primarily. And I don't know if it came out in candle form, but the notes on that one are fresh sea salt, blooming lavender, and sun-drenched waves. So once again, we have lavender, salt, and sun-drenched, actually sun-drenched sands. Sun-drenched sands though, usually when they put a sands note in there, what they really mean is sandalwood. So if it is sandalwood, lavender, and sea salt, then to me it looks like the same notes as Oceanside Lavender. All right, we need Kent here, and we need maybe Josh from Touch the Fire twice. Is sea salt and lavender fragrance that was body care? Is it the same thing as Oceanside Lavender in candle form? Question mark. I'm sorry, I'm not the one that can answer that, but on paper, they look awfully the same in terms of it being lavender, probably sandalwood, and aquatic salt, which is, that's what all, both of those look like. Now, lavender sea is different. Lavender sea is soft to lavender waves, vanilla, and coconut. So now we don't have sandalwood in here, um, and I can vouch for the fact that this is a much more well-rounded conceptual. The, the Oceanside Lavender is, it's, it's a little bit on the aggressive side. It's thinner, it's got like two notes, like sea salt and like aromatherapy lavender. Um, so the, it's a very stripped down for sure. And I generally like candles like that. I'm just not sure that I want salt and aromatherapy lavender. And like I said, didn't perform all that well. Um, I wasn't getting a ton of sandalwood in that candle, so I can't speak to that. Maybe the body care, though, did have a great deal of sandalwood in it. I don't know. This one does not have sandalwood, but it does have something that is very... It might be an amber, to be perfectly honest, but like a higher, um, it's, it, it's, the amber is hitting higher up in the range rather than deep down kind of musky, yeah? And it doesn't necessarily have a woody component, but it does have a salty component. It's like a salty amber and lavender. And the coconut here is so, it's like a whisper of coconut. And the coconut is just, providing kind of like a beachy fruity finish to what is essentially a salted vanilla lavender conceptual with some amber in it that makes it more like obviously not gourmand yeah but i wouldn't say like full board body care either it's just a very nice conceptual it's kind of in the same category as gwen's note for instance which was another lav lavender and sandalwood candle. That one is lavender, sandalwood, and sage. And I'm not going to like irritate all of you promoting Gwen's note again. However, do you know how many Bath and Body Works I have been at over the last two weeks? And I am dismayed by the towers of Gwen's note candles. Dismayed. It's just Ugh, it drives me crazy. Do you know what drives me crazy? Is when Bath & Body Works does a really great candle and like nobody buys it and nobody knows that it's good. And then there are so many other candles that are just not good and they fly off the shelves. I don't know. In this case, it is probably a marketing and promotion blunder more than anything else. And there's a whole host of reasons why that little mini collection did not sell as well as it should have, despite the fact that all of the candles were actually above average. And that goes for Yumi and the Sea and Anna's Garden, but especially Yumi and the Sea and Gwen's Note. Those two were really quite good. All right, close parentheses on that. Um, this one is very nice. In the genre of Gwen's Note, Ooh, even in the genre of like mahogany coconut, for instance, 
although mahogany coconut is a lot more bassy and masculine and musky. But again, all three of them has this really beautiful, almost stereophonic, beachy, conceptual, but a sophisticated vibe. Sophisticated, you know? Bath & Body Works does a lot of beachy candles that are not sophisticated. This one is, it really is. That said, the fact that it's not so bassy means that it kind of, it because it sits kind of in the mid range and maybe a little bit into the higher range, it's probably not firing on quite enough levels, which is to say that it didn't project quite as well as I wanted it to. I kept it primarily in the back bedroom where it had a really great feel. It's a beautiful, as most of these lavender conceptuals are, are beautiful in kind of a more intimate setting. Um, and because they're a little bit shyer in terms of strength and throw, also they come into their own fragrance wise. Um, and strength-wise in a more enclosed, intimate space. Um, I would say that in the back bedroom, I could get it up to at least a 6.5, if not a 7, something like that. Um, I don't know that I attempted it a whole lot in the open concept because I really just liked it and liked it as a back bedroom scent. I did not have to take it to the guest bathroom, and this candle way outperformed that Oceanside Lavender, just no question. So for me, if I had to pick one, it would most certainly be this one over the Oceanside Lavender. And if it hasn't come back <laughs> for six years, I really think it should. That being said, is it remarkably different than a whole host of candles that we've even had this year? No, no. Does it break the mold? Does it blow your mind? Does it change your life? No. It's just a really good lavender conceptual that is sophisticated and sweet at the same time. It's a great, it's just a great good candle, if you know what I mean. Um, and they certainly have a lot, a backbench of candles like this, a backbench of lavender candles, a backbench of lavender oceanside candles and conceptuals with lavender and or sandalwood. So like I said, nothing necessarily that breaks the mold. But of all of the ones that I've smelled, I like this one. And I would probably choose it over most of the other ones, certainly over Oceanside Lavender. And if you know something about sea salt and lavender and Oceanside Lavender, i.e. are they the same fragrance, just in different iterations, candle versus body care? I don't know. On paper, it kind of looks like it, but who knows with Bath & Body Works. You can't get Lavender C right now, but I kind of hope it comes back. Maybe next year? Mm, I like it. I like it better than the Oceanside Lavender, whole host of other things. It's just nice when there's a decent candle that performs well, and it did. Palo Santo and Vanilla, same deal, same deal. And if you think that you're the kind of person that might like that one, I really encourage you to pick it up, but wait for a sale, wait for a sale. I will link information down below for Palo Santo and Vanilla. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go into orbit if we go into this fall season and they do not have pumpkin Palo Santo, have they learned nothing from homeworks, from all these other, why are they being scooped on pumpkin Palo Santo when they have one of the best Palo Santo notes in home fragrance right now? I don't get it. So I hope very much that it is coming down the pike in the next month or two. Are you hoping for that too? I am. All right, my friends, I promised a giveaway <laughs> because, because I am over a thousand subscribers now, which is like amazing and brilliant. And I just feel like really humbled and just so like grateful to all of you. I did not do this for the views and I guess I should reserve this for my like <laughs> giveaway video. Honestly, I haven't done this for the views for free candles, for money, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I still don't really want to do like collaborations. I don't want to do PR. I mean, I, I won't turn away people giving me candles, but I'm not interested in being a brand ambassador. I'm just not. Um, so I, I just, I, I guess I'm just like really kind of surprised and in a really pleasant way that like my channel has done so well over essentially a year and a half, less than a year and a half. And so I just want to thank you for all of that. And um, I, 
I, I am just so happy, kind of very clumped, that so many people like 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 what I'm doing and like watching me <laughs> or like listening to my voice. Um, I just thank you so much. And I, I don't grudge anyone who, you know, doesn't necessarily like all of the candles that I review or like my vibe, like obviously different strokes for different folks and um, you know, God bless. But I, I just really thank you all. I really do. So anyway, I am going to do a review, not a review, well, kind of a review and a giveaway of all seven, well, not all seven. I'm gonna review all seven of the Henry Bendel candles, which are still being sold here in Columbus, Ohio. And for one lucky viewer, I am going to give you one of your choice of the seven Henry Bendel candles. So look for that video. If I can find a spare minute in the next day or two, I hope to have that posted by like maybe Saturday or Sunday. So stay tuned for that. I will catch you in that video. See you later.